Matiba also visited you in 2002 because you refused to actually take your ARVs. Just take yeah. me through what happened and if he was able to actually convince you to take your ARV. Um, I couldn't afford the fluconazole. My friends afforded it for me. I wouldn't have been able to afford antiretrovirals. It's only because I was an activist and I had lots of friends who could have saved my life, would have saved my life. And I decided, just as a, you know, my mother always said, if I can't give one of my children something, I'm not going to give it. If I can't give all of my children something, I wouldn't give it to one. And so it's a question of simple equality. And I thought if my brother had HIV, they wouldn't have been able to afford medicines. And that's why I decided not to take medicines. And the idea was that the prices must come down and government must be able to afford it. And then we went through the period of terrible, terrible, terrible denialism. Uh, and uh, uh, former President Becky and his health minister, Mante Shabal Alam Simang. And it was almost like a war against government, or by government against us, against the TAC. But it was a war without bullets. And for me, Madiba provided a shield to us. So in 2002, July 2002, uh, TAC had just won its court case at the Constitutional Court. And my colleague Sipo Mtati and Nathan Geffen and them were all in the Constitutional Court and for mother-to-child prevention, and I was very sick in, at home. And it was also, no, CIPO was a Barcelona conference. Okay. And at the Barcelona conference of the AIDS, uh, and Madiba was there, and I was meant to address that conference. And so I had just done a video speech from home. And I get this phone call, my, my first boyfriend, uh, now my ex-boyfriend, but my closest family member, like my mother-in-law, uh, Jack, he comes up and he says, Madiba's on the phone. I said, what? You're talking nonsense. And I just get this, uh, I say, hello? Uh, Zaki, I want you to take your medicines. Wow. And um, I said, how are you, Madiba? Um, he says, I'm well. And he says, I'm going to come to your house. I said, Madiba, let's take a step back. First, uh, you can ask me to take medicines, but... I don't think I'm going to say yes. Uh, so we can discuss what, there are two things I would like you to do if you come. First, you're going to not meet me alone, but you're going to meet me with my comrades in the treatment action campaign. And second, um, you, we want you to take our demands to the president. And he came and it was a phenomenal you know, it was, you, you, uh, everyone knows Matiba, he, he just brightened up the atmosphere. By that time I was bat much better. I was out of bed and he said to me, you look so healthy. <laughs> um, and then we, you know, he, he sat down with me, he sat down with the colleagues and we agreed that I was not going to take my medicine. He was going to take the message to the president. He then went to an ANC NEC where essentially he got humiliated, shouted by, at by people like uh, the late Peter Mukaba, the late Tumisani Makaya, um, Isapad, Alec Owen, Mantushabal Alam Siman. They humiliated him in an ANC-NEC meeting. And all the others kept quiet. Mm. 